Look at that. Right on time, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's no longer Eastern Daylight Time. I'm Jason Lynette, and this is the business, influence, and persuasion community for coaches and course creators. I want to thank you all for joining me here today, and I'm really excited to share the concepts, the principles, these tested-for-you strategies that I'm going to be revealing on the live stream here this week. The whole concept around this is that so often I meet people who seem a little bit averse to sales. They seem a little timid in terms of making the offer. Even inside of one of our communities, this seems to be such a hot button topic that um, respectfully someone completely misunderstood a whole thread. Because in our communities, we always talk about how to build that environment where really at the end of the day, you don't have to sell. People see the value in what you do People have gone through the channels of communication that you've set up, whether it's online content, whether it's live training videos, whether it's even a conversation. And because by structuring the right hypnotic language hacks inside of the messaging, what it actually does for us is it creates this situation where ethically speaking, people are now selling themselves into what we do. So as much as this is a community around ethical influence and positive persuasion, I'll let you know some of our really high-tech closing lines that we often teach. I can meet with you next Thursday at 2 o'clock. How's that? And no, we're not going to script that out. It's really that direct. <laughs> or how about this one? The fee for the program is this much. Did you want to pay in full or payment plan that? Or credit to my friend Michael DeShallot. Here's my other favorite one. Okay, so what do you want to do? Because we know that situation where we're on the other side of what feels like a hard close. When someone is selling us really, really hard to something. And we're a culture that nowadays people lean in for education and they lean back from sales offers. So because of that, this really creates the need to communicate to your ideal clients in such a way that two things are actually happening. First of all, there's a bit of a magnetic equation that's going on. The first is that you are appropriately attracting in the people who are a fit for what you do. And respectfully, you are also repelling away the people who are not quite a fit for what you do. That's the goal of communication, step number one. The other goal of the communication is to start to speak to that emotional mind decision-making part of their brain so that, that they are now pacing themselves, they are putting themselves inside of the actual user experience, appropriately bypassing that decision point of the mind. So by the time the invitation, behind, but by the time that opportunity is there, now they see the value. And with that, as is my style three minutes in, welcome everybody, I'm Jason Lynette. And part of my backstory is about 20 years experience as a hypnotist. What went from a hobby to then a career, at one point traveling around doing those entertainment programs, but then discovering the hypnotherapy side of things. And as a business owner, that discovery that the same methods that I was using to help my clients to produce change, if we lifted those same principles up and dropped them into the sales and marketing, that's when my calendar became completely booked full, that's when I was able to raise my personal rates up until a premium. And by doing so as well, that time I used to spend on a call trying to sell what I was doing became a whole lot shorter. So uh, just to see that everybody's ready here, if that equation sounds good, to spend even less time delivering even more value, creating even more value in the marketplace, not just for those people who are curious about what you do, but on top of that, people who are ready to invest their money in the services and the products that you provide. Hey, if that excites you, let me know by dropping the word start in the comments down below. That will give me the cue to jump through my list of everything I'm here to share with you here today. Um, by the way, if you look up above, a little technical thing for those of you here with me on the live stream, because I know these get a big uh, viewing afterwards as way of the replay here. There's a weird link up above. If you click that, that will let me see your name as you comment. Uh, and at least Andre did that. Of course you did, Andre. Good to see you here, buddy. And uh, awesome. Let's turn that off here. That's a whole lot of starts. That's what we'd like to see. So the whole message here 
The whole principle is that of pre-sold clients. And just to kind of reference this uh, little tiff that apparently popped up inside of another community that I run, it was that moment where someone was talking about the principles that I teach and someone else had the perception that, no, we're waiting until the end to pay. And no, instead, let's create that environment where by the time we get on that call with someone, by the time we get to the close of that call, what really happens is that now they see the full value in what you do. So I'm going to break this down into three steps today, three things that you can start to put into use immediately. I'm going to cover as much as I can in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. And for those that want to go further with this, I'll explain exactly how you can go about doing that. Part number one, principle number one has nothing to do with the words that you say has nothing to do with the scripting in terms of what you deliver. Though I would encourage, as much as this is a community based upon what we call hypnotic language hacks, I would like you to talk good. And yes, I know. <laughs> but it comes around to, we want the communication to be effective. We want the sequencing of knowledge. It's where inside of our private community the other day, we did a whole deep dive workshop on how to make sure you can tell the story as to what your service, what your product provides, so that again, people are appropriately selling themselves inside of what you do. However, the best copy in the world, the best funnels in the world, the best persuasive language in the world is gonna have absolutely zero effect if you don't nail this first thing. Now, I'll give you, um, sort of a three-word phrase in terms of how we describe this. Consistent, genuine enthusiasm. Because imagine the opposite, by the way. Here we are, we're all here together on this uh, Monday afternoon or whatever your time zone is. I know we have people all around the world. Patty, it's late for you. Uh, it's, what is it, like nine o'clock where you are right now. Good to have you here, by the way. Uh, but we have that moment where if this presentation started... Okay, hang out for a couple of minutes. We're going to start in a few minutes. Let me see if more people log in. Check my email, browse Reddit. You see the uh, screen changing colors on my face because I'm clearly distracted. Yeah, how would that go? So to create that consistent, genuine enthusiasm, the consistency is a part that I'll call this out. This weekly event that I do is locked into my calendar and we can't move it because of the way that I've set it up, or at least I've installed the idea that I cannot move it. That being said, next week, I'm on an airplane. Um, so we're gonna do it at a slightly different time next week. I'll let you know the details of that. So the consistency, there's no such thing as finding the time, there's only making the time. And just a little tip on consistency. It's the same advice as to the question, what is the most effective exercise? The official answer, based on the research, the one you'll actually do. Uh, quick heads up, I saw a little question here in the comments. Do you see me, Jason Lynette? Um, this is more of a lecture in this community, inside of our private communities, where we all go on screen, and it's more of the mastermind hands-on. So I'm going to be a little bit more in the lecture style. But if you've got questions as we keep going, drop those in the comments down below, and we'll address those if we've got time. So consistent, genuine enthusiasm. I mentioned that little principle that the most consistent exercise is the one that you'll actually do. I do two different podcasts for my various businesses. I do this live stream and you may choose different mediums. Pick something you can be consistent at. In terms of genuine, this should come easy. If you genuinely care about the message that you're sharing, that's when people will be attracted to what you do. If you try to fake that enthusiasm, if you try to fake that genuine ability, people can smell it a mile away. So this is where to make use of some principles to dip into your own sort of peak performance state of mind, to have the skills and abilities to perhaps recall some empowered moment, a moment where you maybe won an award, a moment where you were feeling celebrated, or we're all here as business owners, a time that you had a really great business day. You know, the first time you made a sale, 
and to reconnect with that emotion and bring that into your presentation. The first time you made a larger sale that you had maybe a four figure day and you had not yet done that before as a business owner. First time you had a five figure day, maybe even a six figure day for some of you that I'm seeing or here right now. So to connect with that emotion, to connect with that feeling, that genuine sensation of actually success, even better, because I can sit here and talk about what I've done and to do a search online, here's all the stories from people who have gone through some of what I teach and the results that I've made. It's why on one of my podcasts, most of our time is spent elevating other people. And if there's ever the troll online, here's this mountain of evidence that just says otherwise. So when you have the ability, whatever these empowered states of mind are, when you have the ability to call on that on demand, that's where suddenly, in the words of Lauren Michaels, the longtime producer of Saturday Night Live, whether we're ready or not, the show goes live at 1130. And whether I'm ready or not, this stream, 90% of the time, goes live at 4 p.m. in my time zone on Mondays. And I'd ask you all a question, and feel free to use the uh, comments down below. The, the question would be, based on the fact that we can either draw from ourselves or even draw from others. We call this modeling, the ability that you can model someone else's delivery style, not to the point of monkeying, not to the point of duplicating or even ripping off what they're doing, no, but the way that I'd go back to when Steve Jobs would do the presentations for Apple. It was this, forgive me here, absolute nerdy delight that he had like people in his living room and he was showing off this thing that he was so excited about. And if you've ever seen me on a webinar, the moment where I transition from teaching to then making an offer, that's what I'm channeling. So I'm curious to hear from all of you. Uh, the question would be, name someone whose presentational style you're drawn to. It might be in a similar market that you're inside of. It might be someone who's more well-known. Uh, this camera angle, by the way, this is where I go obscure and very specific here. Um, Craig Ferguson, when he hosted the Late Late Show, the one that's now James Corden, the way that he had an audience, but he was the first one to really play to the camera at a very specific angle. So the question to you all, who would be those people that you are drawn to their presentational style? And not to entirely mimic or rip off or copy what they're doing, but just kind of to pull some of the flavor of it and then put that into use of your own. So whoever comes to mind, someone whose presentational style you are personally drawn to, that in addition to drawing from your own successes, you can start to draw from those resources as well. I'm curious to see with who we've got here right now. Um, let me know. Drop that into the comments down below. I want to see what kind of names pop up. Everything is now purple in the office, by the way. Genuinely, everything. <laughs> we gave those out. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, Bandler, one of the founders of NLP in storytelling. Yeah. Uh, oh, Karen. Cool. Um, you. You too, Karen. You're awesome. Yeah, uh, let's see. Tony Robbins and his energy. So to look at how, again, we're drawn to those people who very sincerely care about what they do. We're bringing them into a movement. And what we're activating in people's minds when we do this the right way is we're creating this feeling of connection. We're creating this feeling of a bond. We're creating this sensation that people want to be a part of something. The reason why people are often responding to your offer is not only what your offer is, but it's also because you represent something to them that they're looking to achieve. So when you put the right strategies in place to become that leader, to become that person who draws people into a movement and they want more, that's how we can start to create that pre-sold environment here. Let's keep going here because we've talked about showing up with authority. It's not just a matter of putting content out there. It's a matter of how we present. The next point in terms of pre-sold content, Andre, that is creepy. 
Mark Hamill's voice for the Joker, but I've heard that, that is incredible voice work that he does. <laughs> That's an oddly specific reference. I've only seen one cartoon of that, but you are definitely speaking my language there in terms of obscurity. There we go. I'm censoring myself. There's a weird story I almost told that would have had us here five minutes. A comedian from the 1980s that I saw on a Broadway show, he walks out, I yell his name. And like everyone's there for the stars of the show. And I yell out his name and he goes, hey, took me out to dinner for an hour and a half. <laughs> I'd say the name, but most of you wouldn't get it. Let's keep rolling here because let's talk about content. Because the content that you present the language that you put out there, the way that you sequence information. One of the biggest mistakes that people often make is that they speak to the bullet points, the benefits and the features. Because think about this. The first point here in terms of creating pre-sold clients was about you and how you show up, which is where it makes sense that for the second point in terms of pre-sold clients, we definitely have to make that conversation now about them. And here's the thing. Your ideal clients, this is where so sales is noble, because when we're doing sales right, we're solving a problem. We're creating a solution for someone. We're moving them through their own hero's journey. And by doing so, how dare we not make it easy for them to take the next step and then find the full value inside of what you do. So this is where inside of your communication, what you need to do now is to start to speak to their emotional needs. Speak to what they're actually looking for. There's a podcast episode that I put out a while ago. It's the one on criteria shifting, and it really reveals the principle of under promise over deliver. And that's not an original principle, but the formula to do that is one that by tracking some of the best people in sales and some of the things that I've put into use and what our communities have put into use as well, turns out there's a simple formula to create an under-promise, over-deliver moment. Sell people what they want. And in the process of delivering what they want, give them what they need. Even better, start to deliver what they need in all of your communication. The videos that you produce, the writing that you put out there. Moments where you're on a call with someone where oftentimes in high level consulting, conversations are the currency of coaching. So to have that ability to now, at this point, speak to their emotional needs. And here's where this might require a little bit of effort on your part in the early stages. If you don't yet know what their emotional needs are, this is where in terms of hypnotic language patterns, we're either gathering information or we're putting information to use in order to affect a change. And if you ever don't know what you should be doing in affecting a change, could it even be asking for the sale and subsequently getting it? If you're ever over here in this sales acquisition section and you don't know what to say, it means there is more work to be done over here. So a simple principle for this would be to ask the right questions that are really invoking the emotional mind decisions as to why someone is seeking out a solution. Because the things that people would often buy are not necessarily the things that they want. We would think, simple example, we would think they want the phone, they want the phone, but they need it to make contact with their family members. They need it to have um, a GPS in the same thing. They need it to not carry around a camera. <laughs> so if we speak to those specific needs, that's when it becomes an entirely different conversation. And even better, well, just out of curiosity, tell me about that need to keep in contact with your family. Well, this way I can see where my kids are. This way, if I need to send them a message, I can get directly in front of them. Well, well to have that connection to your kids, What's that going to give you? Well, it's just going to give me this sense of peace of mind and this feeling of, let's call it security, that I know they're safe, I know they're all right, and, you know, God forbid something ever pops up, I'm going to have the ability to actually get in contact with them. And really, that's why you're reviewing these products, aren't you? 
I don't sell phones. But we just did. <laughs> so to speak to those emotional needs and some of the common ones, I'm curious to hear your guesses, your assumptions. This is the away from question I'm going to ask and drop your comments down below. I'm curious to see what you all come up with on this. And your markets may be different than mine. When I'm speaking to someone who wants to join one of my educational programs, that's often a very different emotional need. When I'm speaking to a one-to-one -one client who wants to produce a personal change, when it's someone whose business is already bursting at the seams and they don't quite need a coach, they need a consultant to point them in the right directions, give them the right strategies to then really level things up and scale that success and income and yes, ethics serve an even greater audience and produce results, that's another very different emotional need. So in the interactions in your business and the work that you're currently doing, what are some of those emotional needs that you find you're currently speaking to? Drop that in the comment down below. It's likely just one word. It might be fear. I speak a lot of people who are frustrated. Uh, this is not one word. I feel work with a lot of people who feel they're not reaching their full potential. That's a lot of people who respond to what I do and show up to the streams that I present. So what are some of those emotional needs that you've been running into? Because yes, there can be surface structure, as we say. There can be the surface structure as in, here's the person who wants to quit a habit. They smoke cigarettes on occasion and they feel they can't quit on their own. That's that kind of symptom. Yet the thing they might be actually working on is a feeling of comfort. That person who doesn't quite have a major, let's phrase it this way, politely diagnosable drinking problem may feel, uh, this one popped up, a lack of confidence. That they feel, I kind of need this thing as a crutch to be in a social environment, um, but then I'm not performing to the best of my abilities at networking events. I, I had that as a client a couple of months ago. It had nothing to do with the alcohol. It had everything to do with that emotional need. Let's see, getting unstuck, low self-esteem, confidence. Uh, a good friend of mine used to say that no matter what your product is, no matter what your service is, you're always selling confidence. They don't yet have confidence in the things that they're wanting to do. They don't yet have confidence in their ability to consistently get the results that they want. This applies whether it's business to consumer or business to business. We're consistently selling confidence inside of what we're offering there. So to speak to that confidence, to speak to that ability to elevate their status, not only just to people around them, but this kind of goes back to where we started the day, doesn't it? That principle of genuine, consistent enthusiasm, where now that confidence is organic. Now that confidence is deserved. So one of the best things you can do if part of your sales process involves getting on a call with people, start to ask the right questions at the right time. And by doing so, they're going to feed you what those emotional mind decisions are. This is why, yes, we can teach frameworks. <laughs> when, I, when I break down high ticket sales over a phone call or even a, a Zoom presentation, you know, there's 15 steps that we could go through. Some might only take two or three seconds to do properly. Uh, many of them often combine into one chunk, but you understand this one sentence satisfies points six, seven, and eight. <laughs> Some of them happen very quickly. But by asking the right questions, we might see we don't have to twist the knife on this specific emotion because instead we can actually speak directly to that. Even better, when we get into it, we can see that, okay, so if here's a framework of 15 steps, what could happen is we might realize where we would be in the act two part needs to be where we start. And by really eliciting those emotional mind decisions, you might not even have to speak to the bullet points, the features, the stuff you're going to give them because instead you can speak directly to how you're going to serve them and how you're going to help them to overcome that challenge. So point number one, confident, genuine enthusiasm. Be that person that people are drawn to. Second of all, use the right language patterns to speak to their emotional needs. Let's bring it on home here. We're going to keep going for another 10 minutes or so. We keep these to a tight 35 to 40 minutes. This one's my favorite. 
This one is my favorite, which would be, there's a principle in communication that's referred to as future pacing, which you do this on your own all the time. It's to, you should never, by the way, I learned this back in my fifth grade English class with Mrs. Antley, uh, who to this day is my favorite teacher ever. She was the one we hated <laughs> because, sixth grade, she put um, a sentence on the board and made us diagram all the grammar. Uh, yet now I know where to put a comma. I know when to use the colon or the semicolon. And thank you, Mrs. Antley. I don't think she's watching right now. Uh, <laughs> the strength of speaking to the emotional needs can be done even better. People lean in for education. People lean in for stories. People lean in for insights and discoveries and epiphanies. People lean in when you're genuine and real. And when we dip into that sales mode, there's this lean back. Uh, quick side story. Um, when you learn how to do this influential sales process, you can appropriately break other people's sales processes. Uh, we're in the process of maybe switching the insurance on our home because it might be better to reduce some things on both home and car and umbrella insurance is what they call this. And we're getting bids from other companies. And one of the guys this morning, and this is sad, um, he genuinely had the best offer, but just it was not a good call because he spent the entire time trying to tear apart the company that I was already with, which based on my due diligence had all sorts of positive reviews and his didn't. Well, you got to be careful because if you have a fly by night insurance company, they might fold and never be able to pay out the things. Actually, I did my research. They have the highest ratings of payouts. Have you seen this link? I just emailed it to you. Hey, the thing with insurance, yeah, I won't we'll go there. <laughs> so when you recognize what someone's trying to do, that's the fill in the blank expletive that gives sales a bad name. Serve people, serve people. And here's how. Use stories to put them into the process. Use stories and your language to put them already inside of the solution. And by doing so, they're running that neurological pattern in their brain where now they're doing the sales process for you. There's often strength as well in asking the ambiguous question. Here's one. What would that be like for you? Well, to have that, what would that give you? And it's not about how clever I can be and how smart I can be in that moment. It's about sharing a genuine moment with somebody. So here's the pattern. Tell a story. And even though the story, by the way, should always be true, because if you lie to people, your pants will be on fire. Research has proven that. That's why everyone says liar, liar, pants on fire. So tell a story that's true. If you don't yet have your own stories, this is where chances are there's got to be some research that backs up the work that you do. Scholar.google.com. That's a cool place to find all sorts of research and then use that as part of your process. Over time, then you can take down the research and increase your own success stories. I used to say, take this one down to build this one up. Now I say use them both if you can. People buy emotionally and people also buy analytically. So to lean on just one of these strategies is a mistake. You want to use a balance of both. Most of you are not yet doing emotional selling. That's why we're here. So use stories to put them into the process. And even though it's a story about maybe someone else that you've worked with and some discovery, some epiphany that they've made, if you just bend the right language patterns at the right time, what happens is, is that they now cast themselves in that story. It puts them in the experience of having the mental perception of that result. And the psychological principle of this becomes because you are the one conducting the story, you are the one directing the movie, the play in their mind, they are now appropriately attaching you to that journey and putting themselves inside of it. With the right language patterns, what's happening is they're nodding their head internally, or very often externally as well, and saying to themselves, yes, that's what I want. I'm so glad I'm speaking to this person. I'm so glad 
I'm watching this person. I'm so glad I tuned in. I'm so glad I watched this webinar. This is where we feel this mindset of sales of service, of having the mindset of sales as service because we can make someone feel better on a phone call. We can give them a few strategies by way of maybe an ebook or even a full book. But this is where your coaching services, this is where your products, this is where in an ideal world, this hybrid combination of the two really begins to come to play. Yeah, there's some nice comments in the chat here ratifying everything we're talking about here. So again, making sure that we use stories. There's that analytical, there's that literal part of the brain. There's also that creative part. That's the reason why we turn the pages of the book that we're reading. We watch the we binge watch the entire show because the last episode had a cliffhanger. We're looking forward to the movie because we're all drawn to narratives. We're all drawn to stories. And the secret to this is don't just tell stories for the sake of telling stories. One, make sure your stories illustrate a specific point. And two, use the right language patterns inside of your stories so that now you're creating this little subtle shift where they're putting themselves in that story, observing you, back to point one, as that genuinely enthusiastic person who cares because you are. And this person who can serve them, who can help them to create that result. This is where, again, as I know, many of the people who respond to what I do, many of the audiences I speak to, like to kind of stand behind this mask of, but I'm not a business person. I'm not really much of a salesperson. And I want you to realize, yes, your coaching service, yes, your product can dramatically change someone's life. The sales process is step one. And even better, to do it in such a way that now they've sold themselves into what you do. That's how you can realize these are three steps to create pre-sold clients. I got a bit of time I can stick around here. If these are things that you need some help doing in the shape of your business, I would love to be of service. I would love to help. Just drop the word, put it in all caps so we can see it. Drop the word sold in the comments down below, either myself or someone who works with me. We'll reach out to you and we'll get on a call and schedule the time to actually create that game plan of exactly when, where, and why to plug these principles into your business. It's not just about putting yourself out there. It's about putting the message out there in a way that, again, magnetically draws in the people you want, respectfully repels away the people you don't want, and even better as well, starts to speak to their emotional needs, serves them, and then matches up with this database you'll now have in your mind in terms of what are the stories that they need to hear? What are the principles? What are the epiphanies they need to have to sort of push that little lever is where they now go, that's what I need. That's how we ought to be doing this. Otherwise, it was the call I was the receiving end this morning where the guy's doing all this sleazy crap and even though he had the best offer of anybody, wasn't a good experience. Don't do that to people. <laughs> Instead, service, value, this is kind of cool here. Uh, if these are things you need help doing, drop the word SOLD in all caps in the comment down below. Though we did get one with an exclamation mark. So we'll let that go. <laughs> Let's see. I think we need a new word for sales, calling it something else. The idea of sales just fills me with dread. Um, step number one, stop it. <laughs> no. Step number two is realize what the word actually means. This next sentence has the potential to offend, uh, yet clearly there are cultures who are reclaiming words. This dialogue around that's their word, and if other people use it, it comes across as offensive. And there's many examples of that now. Let, let's do that with sales. Now, I'll share one little principle here in terms of how we can make that modification in the mind. Here's one that I teach inside of our community, which would be that let's get rid of the terminology of the upsell and instead think of it as an upgrade, which at the end of the day, an upgrade is still an upsell. But by thinking of it as an upgrade, 
if every opportunity to advance the relationship and provide more value by another transaction. For, for those that might not know the upsell principle, because they've bought one thing, here comes an offer to buy another thing. And sometimes it's immediate. In the online marketing world, there's a thing called the one-click upsell, that as soon as you buy this thing, you're offered something else. And sometimes, if that's not done appropriately, it leads to what's now called upsell hell, <laughs> which is where here's all these disconnected offers. you know. And look at sometimes, be aware of this sometimes, let's use software as an example, which would be that sometimes... Um, Here's a software you maybe have seen me use uh, where like, you know, we can put a transcription on the screen and um, don't ask me which one it is because I don't like it and can't recommend it, <laughs> but I have to hire people to make it work and we have to pay for our own transcription elsewhere. So here's this software that promised that and hopefully it'll get better or we'll find a better one. And the situation was, yes, it was like $47 to buy the software, the upgrade was get all these templates to have all the graphic design work done for you. It was a fair offer. Uh, by the way, the templates were phenomenal. We're still using those. We're not using the software anymore. <laughs> so that's an example of an upgrade because it advances the relationship. This principle, by the way, for those that might not know it here, is what's called reframing, just to put a different word on a concept. And I'd say to the comment there, instead of sales, if it serves you to just use the word service, I've got three service calls today. Uh, it is breathtaking, by the way, how many people are looking for clarity and how many people are looking to satisfy the emotional need of clarity. Um, we had this amazing post in our private community for those in my group consulting program. And it was from our call that we did on Friday about how to take your entire process that you guide people through and present it in a different way that kind of hits the points as to what we've been talking about. I'm pointing because I have my notes on my screen. <laughs> but it speaks to that. And that was Friday. And then like either yesterday or today, she put up this incredible post that here's this beautiful aha moment. So you could call it a clarity call, you know, a clarity process. If reframing the word makes it better, uh, I would rather you reclaim the word because sales is noble. And again, the ethics to all of this, if you're realizing you can't serve the person, don't make the offer. As simple as that. Uh, we're a social media culture. You don't need bad reviews. You don't need buyer's remorse. Um, you want to make sure you're serving people the entire way through. Even better, one of the other influence principles is even once you've sold, now you're still selling. We call that onboarding. Uh, we're going to wrap this up in a couple of moments. I want to thank all of you who joined me here today. Uh, I think we still have our fancy graphics. Yes, we still have the fireworks graphic uh, back from the 4th of July. <laughs> uh, yeah, Karen was there for that uh, moment. I loved her aha moment. Again, to get this clarity inside of what we do. If you need clarity inside of what you're doing, drop the word sold in the comments down below, whether you're here with me live right now or whether you're watching the replay. I want to thank all of you for joining me. Change your words, change your business, change your life. Talk with you all soon.